Welcome. Today, I want to take a close look at what it means to call the results of any creative work good and how using language like that is holding us back from accessing a deeper level of creative expression and courage. We constantly refer to anything as good or bad, saying things like, that's a good song or that movie was terrible. These things roll off the tongue easily. We don't think twice about it. The problem is that these kinds of statements are treated as facts and not as the subjective opinions that they actually are. I know that's not a new idea. I know you know that. I know it seems super obvious, but what I'd like to do is challenge all of us to reflect on whether or not we're actually operating from that obvious perspective on a day-to-day -day basis. What seems like this nitpicky semantic argument on the surface can actually open the door to revealing a powerful and detrimental belief system that is widely held, and that is the belief that art can be good or bad. I've had enough conversations with creative peers and clients and students and colleagues to realize that our desire for our work to turn out good is coming from a deep-seated belief that is causing us a lot of unnecessary anxiety. This belief stunts growth, it stops progress, it holds people back from reaching that version of success that we know is possible when we envision it during those moments of optimism and inspiration. The word good is a meaningless and lazy word in the world of creativity. I encourage you to never use it again when describing anybody's work, including and especially your own. It takes practice, but instead of statically labeling the thing that we're reacting to, instead, it would be helpful to just describe the reaction that we're actually having to that thing. So just saying, I enjoyed that, makes all the difference in the world instead of, that's good. Now, I understand this is just part of our language and people will say something's good and I'll still say something's good. Uh, and I try to catch myself and I, d I do try to work on this, but it's very, very hard because we are so used to it. We are so used to it. The important thing, of course, is the underlying intention and catching ourselves, not just saying it, but catching ourselves believing it. All we're really saying when we say art is good is that it moved us. So if that's the case, why don't we just assume that every time someone says that's good, that they mean that moved me and call it a day, just do that. I'd be fine with that if it weren't for the fact that we actually react differently to the same piece of work at different times. It's not a static label whether or not something moved us, but it is a static label whether or not it's good or bad. Of course, we understand that opinions differ between people, but what we don't acknowledge as often is that opinions are fluid and changing within a single person, within ourselves. The same opinion is not static all the time. We can suddenly like a band that we thought we decided on hating years ago. We can enjoy a movie and then a friend tells us that they thought that movie was terrible and then we change our mind. We're like, yeah, you know what? That, now I see what you mean, that was a bad movie. Something can seem fresh and stimulating one moment and then seem stale and meaningless the next moment, the same thing. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but the eye of the beholder is not fixed. Any number of factors play into our taste shifting moment by moment. How tired are we? Just what time of day is it? Do, are we caffeinated or not? Uh, are we hungry? Who did you just talk to? Have you been interacting with people that day or not? How much or how little do we know about an artist that created this thing? And, and how much or how little do we know about the process of them creating it? That can totally change how you view it and if you call it good or, or if it moves you or not. Sometimes it's overexposure that turn something that you once liked into kind of a flat uh, experience, like a hit song that was exciting at first and now you're totally sick of it because you've heard it too much. Or the opposite can happen where repetition of exposure is the thing that a we start to gain an acquired taste for something. We thought it was unpleasant at first and now we're starting to appreciate it because we've been exposed to it so much. Something like an avant-garde genre of music, for example. 
So one of the big points here is that this fickle attitude towards what we like and don't like and what we're moved by and what we're not and what we call good and bad includes our reaction to our own work and our own stuff that we're creating. This is why we have such a challenge in doing this day in and day out, doing it consistently and finding success. We might make something and hate it in the moment and a month later, we love it. We might love it now and a month later, we hate it. Someone else might tell you something you made is brilliant one day and the same day someone else will tell you it's stupid. Neither of them would be right or wrong. So imagine the freedom and power and honesty that could come from fully embracing and believing this idea that anything anyone says about your work is not a truth, including the compliments. And that's one of the hard things to swallow. Not believing the positive feedback is one of the secrets to not being affected by negative feedback. Not believing positive feedback, not internalizing it, not giving that weight, as well as not judging anyone else's work in a negative way. These, I think, are the two absolute secrets to unlocking the ability to create as authentically and courageously and consistently and seamlessly as possible. Ironically, consistent, courageous, authentic creations are what come across to the rest of the world as what they call good. So to actually get that result that we thought we wanted in the first place to strive for something good, we have to turn everything on its head and totally let go of that even being a thing. And then that result that we wanted before has a chance of happening, but we don't see it that way anymore, though the rest of the world does. All art is equal and neutral. How we or anyone else reacts to it is totally contextual and constantly shifting. Did it move us? Then it moved us for now might be different tomorrow. Did it make us feel nothing at all? Then it made us feel nothing at all. For now, might be different tomorrow. And that's all there is to it. And those reactions say nothing about the actual value of someone's work or their abilities. Adopting this belief system is what gives us the freedom to consistently finish creative works of art. And ironically, Consistently finishing creative works of art is what hones our skills and our abilities to execute with precision. And things that are executed with precision come across to the rest of the world as what they call good. If you adopt this way of thinking, you will make amazing progress in your art. And someday, someone will look at your work and they will call it good and they will compare their ambitions to your accomplishments and they will try to make something good themselves and this comparison will be the thing that prevents them from making progress when you find yourself in this position it will be your duty your job to help this person see and learn how they can soar freely with their creativity just like you've learned to do by in helping them understand that all art is equal and neutral and that good is a meaningless and lazy word in the world of creativity. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this helpful. I think these shifts in perspective absolutely make all the difference and the perspective is everything. So if you have any of those goals, if you have any of those passions, if you have that creative output that you're trying to create, whether it's just performing regularly, it doesn't have to be a creative, tangible piece of work as much as any sort of expression. So I hope you are able to draw on some of these ideas as you continue to go towards those ambitions and those goals. And I'm definitely rooting for you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you next week.